Hi everybody. Today I'm going to go over what is a project definition and uh, as my guide I'm going to use the terms in Greg Horn's book Project the Management Absolute Beginner's Guide, third edition. Uh, I'm going to go through the terms in the order that they're in the uh, in the book and then I'm going to actually show you an example that I made up and change the order a little bit to, to better suit what I think are our needs. Okay, so let's get started. So the first item is the purpose or as I've indicated in the in our in the module one, it's the thesis, and you've been starting to write write these. Essentially, it's the problem, or it's the why of what you're doing, um, and the why in this case is not because you're you're um, completing a capstone for a graduate degree. It really is um, the pro business problem or the creative problem being solved, and and how important it is, and it really can reference the organizational objective which in this case might just be you or it might be you know if you're doing this for an organization or your where you work then you would put that in there as well it's not what you're going to do it's not how you're going to do it but what is the problem you're going to solve why are you doing this why is it important the next item is the goals and objectives and, and this obviously comes out of the purpose because purpose kind of sets the overall direction of of what you're trying to solve and goals and objectives really aren't technical at this point at all that becomes later um, but it really starts communicating what you expect to have happen be done at the end what are the outcomes for the project basically as it says on the slide what are you going to accomplish now the success criteria clearly you know has to relate to the goals and objectives the key thing about success criteria in project management is that it is measurable and verifiable. In other words, if you can't tell you're finished, then it's not really a project. So it's really a key, key component when, when defining your, when your project. And remember, in these success criteria, or all these things can change as the project and the plan goes along. The point is you have to start somewhere, you have to have, a, you have, to have something to aim at, and then go from there in terms of how you measure these things and whether things have to be adjusted or tweaked as, as you, as you as you move along. But the success criteria is very important to establish very early on. The project context is really how what 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 context is the project being done on in terms of everything else around the project team, the project manager, the organization, or if you're just yourself, what else is going on in your life? It's happening in the context of doing work, uh, of completing some other course, uh, while this other project is going on. So essentially, it's showing how the project fits within your your personal organization and your own flow of what you're doing. Project dependencies. Um, you know, it says here it's related to project context, but this is really about the um, the project itself and what dependencies affect the result or success factors of the project. You're depending on a certain piece of software working a certain way. You're depending on the weather being reasonable to go out and shoot video, things like that. So in other words, the project to get done depends on certain things happening or being available or, or, or going on. Now, scope specifications, the scope is probably this and the next one out of scope. I'd say in my experience, the most important uh, piece of documentation list that you create for a project plan. Because it really outlines how far, how wide, how big, or how small this project is. Essentially, as the, as the screen says, it, 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 it draws the boundaries for the project. And it really is very high level. You don't get real specific in terms of um, what you're going to make at this point. That comes later. But it's kind of a high-level breakdown of the goals and objectives, um, and we'll see how this. I'll demonstrate this later on. So the recommended project approach. Um, this is new to the third edition of the book, and I really like it a lot because it really s allows you, in a very high, in a high-level way, to recommend uh, how you expect to approach getting the work done. Basically, is what it is you're making uh, for more technical. Or, method, or from your method, what you're going to put together. I'm going to make a website that does this. I'm going to make a project um, uh, uh, a, pr a project proposal that does this. I'm going to create a social media strategy in order to do this using these tools. 
so it actually it's and it's recommended because obviously this could change as you go along as you start putting together the plan or eventually put together the project um, but it really is what approach you're going to take to solve your goals and objectives in order to reach the purpose now out of scope specifications are maybe as important as in scope I can't tell how many times a client because I didn't list or project didn't list what was out of scope came back requesting certain things which seem related but really went far beyond what the designers thought they were putting together or the project managers or the developers so it's very very important to indicate how far uh, what is out of scope what's outside the boundary of what you're planning to put together now constraints is really kind of very related to context and dependencies and all these things kind of relate to each other it really gives you a lot of, of, of topics to kind of really give a very good picture of, of what this project is involved and what it's going to take to put together. In this case, constraints might be schedule. You only have a certain amount of time and all of you have a semester. It might be budgetary and your, uh, or resource as someone or is, is you know, you're expecting some, um, a software developer as a resource to be available or some technical factor that will limit the options and so forth. The risk really essentially takes things like the context or the dependencies or even the constraints and indicates what will happen if one of these things doesn't occur. What's the negative impact? And more importantly, and we'll later on when we do a, a more formal risk assessment in your project plan, what do you do? What are your, what's your plan B essentially if any of these risks come to be? What are you going to do to make up for certain things that don't quite go the way expected. The stakeholders are really everyone involved with the project that has an important role or is expected to play or, or even is um, has a, a role as a, as a critic. Uh, there are high high level stakeholders or essentially are uh, might be the um, uh, CEO of a company is a stakeholder because he's requested a certain thing to happen and there's the various people underneath who become involved with the project, the business unit, if it's a finance department or um, or purchasing department. Uh, in the case of web development, it could be um, any number of, of uh, it could be a creative department or the developers that are involved in putting together the project. And it's you, of course, as well. And anyone who ultimately could be directly affected by the outcome, of what you put together. Uh, assumptions um, really it's essentially what is going to be of what what's true or 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 expected to be in place um, before the project starts and and, the, and the, as it as the screen says you know all the scope assumptions and constraints constraints they all combine to clearly define what the project is the assumptions is what's going to happen from from day one assumption might be I'm going to use this particular software assumption is I'm going to have a certain amount of time to do this of course some but there also was you know a, a one of the um, constraints was also the schedule in terms of how long you have to do it so as you see there's a, there's a big relationship between these things um, and I think as you start working them out you'll start to develop and come up with your own sort of personal guide of what goes into each of these categories. Okay, so for the purpose, my example is uh, I came up with a pie project. And I'm reordering these, these sections a bit, which I'll, I will outline in the, in the module, as you'll see, in, in order I'd like to put, to put them together, where I think makes a little more sense. So the purpose or problem of, of the pie project is that there are many poor pie recipes on the web resulting in inferior pies. The purpose of the project is to show that the web can be a positive force to improve pie quality nationally. Okay. And the only mention of something technical here is the word web. I could, I could have left the word web out and said the purpose of this project is to show that um, there can be a positive force to improve pie quality nationally. And the web is the technique uh, that we're, or the approach we're going to use. But I think it's fine in this context as well. Okay, goals and objectives. Uh, the goal is to create an online resource for top quality pie recipes. 
and also to create pastry making tutorials from top chefs. Simple enough. If I meet, if I reach those to those those two goals or objectives, essentially my project's complete. Clear, concise, kind of simple to understand. Now there's other components of it, because an online resource, well, a lot of things can go into an online resource, but at this top level, this is how simple I want you to be. Okay, so what's the approach? The approach is to create a responsive CMS site with social media commentary and voting. Okay, a YouTube channel of tutorials will be created and integrated into the website. Okay, so I start getting a little more specific. I start getting a little clear about what an online resource is because we talk about social media component, a YouTube channel, and so forth. And it's going to be a CMS site. Essentially, it's going to be content managed. The stakeholders, website founders, the chefs, the website developers. And there could be others, but it's what I came up quickly right now. Success criteria. Okay. Now, the problem with a criteria like this for something which has a social media component is that you know you won't be able to measure the success until the project's way after this, the project's done. So is the project including that operational component of waiting to hear see what happens? But in any case, my success criteria is to understand what success is. That's 10 first place county fair finishes for pies using recipes from the website after the first year. So it's measurable and it's verifiable. So the scope is that I only going to include recipes for apple, cherry, peach, strawberry, rhubarb, and blueberry pie, and videos for making traditional double crust pies. No single, no single crust pie stuff. And, you, and you'll see in the out of scope, I'm not talking about savory pies like pot pie, cream pies, or crumble pies, and the instructional videos are single crust, are not well, out of scope are single crust pies or graham cracker crust. This is traditional double double crust pies, uh, pie crust. So it gives you a sense of out of scope. If the client comes back and says, eh, let's throw a savory pie in, or how about a cream pie? I say, no, wait, wait, the project definition said no savory pies or cream pies. If you want to do that, we'll have to change the scope, which is fine. Um, but is there something to point back to when you get these kinds of requests? The context. Well, it turns out in this development team, in this, this company, there's another project in progress by the same team that is working on pizza recipes. Okay, so it's the context of what this is occurring in. It, it, it gives you a sense of where this fits in the larger picture of what's uh, what may be going on. And in case of your own project, how this fits into the larger picture, what's going on in work or your life and so forth. You don't have to get really de in depth with this. The, um, it's not that important for this, but it's important for you to elaborate in this case in terms of how this fits in. Okay, dependencies. Okay, so project, the dependencies to pull it off, is availability of appropriate fruit when testing recipes. Okay, so in this case, I only want fresh fruit that's in the season. So I've got an issue because some um, blueberries, apples, cherries, peaches, so I'm basically, I'm essentially working summer, okay? So that's a dependency. And fitting in shoes with celebrity chef schedule. In other words, the chefs are going to have schedules, and that's sort of the context in the sense that this is being done in the context of celebrity chefs having schedules doing other stuff. In this case, I'll make it a dependency. That I can't shoot these video shoots. When I shoot the video shoots depends on the celebrity chef schedule. If you can word, use the word depend in the sentence, then it's a dependency. Constraints. Uh, that my test kitchen is available. Uh, the main name is available, and the video crew is avail available from the pizza project. So, is these dependencies? Sure, it depends on, again, this then depends on the test kitchen being available. But it's a constraint in terms of that I can't really, you know, I can work with a chef's schedule, but I really can't do anything if the test kitchen isn't available. The main name I can work around, uh, the video crew available from the pizza project is a constraint because I really can't go forward without that video crew. So I'm constrained in what I can do and how quickly I can get it done, bullet one and two, by uh, these constraints. So risk. The head chef opens a pastry shop and breaks a contract. Uh-oh. My top domain name choices are taken. Got, well, so I have to come up with something else. And the recipes do not tell with focus groups. Then this is about as high level as you get with the risk at this point. As I said earlier, we'll get into more elaborate risk assessment um, and risk management later on in the in the course. 
Okay, so assumptions. That'll start development in April. Um, hopefully, starting to head into the um, in terms of recipe development and w videos into the summer when when stuff comes uh, is in in season. I'm going to use WordPress to to create the site. But the lead chef will purchase ingredients at local farmers markets, and butter or lard will be used for the crust. Uh, uh, the lard, it turns out, is a great way to make traditional um, pastry uh, pastry crust, and uh, we'll try some in butter too. Um, no margarine, no oil, no uh, liquid oils. So that's it. Um, those those are the items we're going to cover in project definition, and here's my little pie project example to see how it fits in terms of something kind of uh, kind of uh, frivolous and silly, but um, you know, I just pulled together really quickly as a way to show you what these things mean. Key thing is that things like constraints, dependencies, context, um, all have a relationship and you can put things in one or the other in order to determine uh, what you're putting together. So hopefully um, I like you like my little example and that's it and um, thank you.